Hi, in this video I'll go through the CLT and the turnoff bound. Um, and before we start, well, let's just set some ground rules. Um, CLT is an approximation. It tries to get the right value, whereas the turnoff bound is an upper bound. Um, it's always going to be greater, but then um, it, it can give you, a, it's always reliable, whereas the CLT may actually give you uh, a result that's wrong. So uh, let's start from where we left off in the last video. We were looking at a sequence of IID random variables, um, xi, and specifically we we're looking at the sum of these random variables and seeing what happens when we make n go to infinity. Well, um, it turns out that with the sum alone, the mean and the variance won't give us much information because they'll just blow up when we make n go to infinity. So the first method we tried to alleviate this fact was to divide by n, which gave us uh, the sample mean. And this le analysis led to the weak law of large numbers, which was a profound result, but we can also learn a lot more by trying something different. So in this video, we're going to um, keep the variance constant, variance constant, and the easiest constant to deal with is one. So let's try to make, uh, so our goal is to get variance of a n, where a is the new random variable we make, to be equal to one. And so how do we do this? Well, recall that variance of k s equals to one over k squared times the variance of s. And we know the variance of s is uh, n sigma squared. So we want one over k squared n sigma squared to be one. So k squared is n sigma squared, and so k is sigma square root of n. Cool, so we got actually got our factors. So now we take our original sn, we shift it by its mean, by subtracting its mean, so then um, this is so that the expectation of our new random variable will be zero. And then we divide by this constant. And so it turns out that our variance of a n will also be equal to one. And these properties are really nice and actually they're necessary for um, the central limit theorem. So now let's get into the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem states that given a sequence of iid x random variables xi, um, and iid is such an important assumption here, don't forget that this is what makes CLT work. You can define a new random variable a of n, which is basically the sum of the xi, minus um, the mean of the sum over um, sigma square root of n, and this is just what we figured out earlier. And so this random variable distribution will start to look like a standard normal distribution. And why is this really powerful? Well, first of all, you don't need to have a specific distribution for the xi. So xi can be pretty much any distribution. Uh, there are some restrictions, of course. Um, but they're very minimal, like the mean and variance should be finite, um, but can be pretty much any distribution and eventually it'll look like the normal distribution. Wow. <laughs> so this is a pretty profound result. And so we can just calculate um, the CDF tables of the normal distribution and then look up the value and see that, oh, the probability that a n is less than this, some certain k is very similar to the probability that the normal variable will be less than k. Um, and then you, you'll know this value because you'd want to know, like for instance, uh, with 99% confidence or whatever, usually it's 95 about, and then there's a value um, when you have 0.95, it'll tell you, oh, this is a CDF, and then you can use that same value here. So that's why it's really cool. Um, 
and then there are some other important things to note as well namely that CLT is useful because you only need these three things. Needs only three things. The mean, the variance of your XI, and the fact that the XI are IID. And just with these three pieces of information, you can get really far with this approximation, which is usually good for um, finding out probabilities of um, values that are close to the mean. Good. So some sample problems, of course, would be to find the probability that you might be um, 500 miles away, um, given that the sum looks like blah, blah, blah. So those are some sample problems with the CLT. There are some things you should be um, aware of, however. So, namely, the fact that um, with the CLT, since we didn't do the proof, we don't know. Uh, CLT doesn't tell us when it's good. So, usually, it seems like a number like n equals 34 is good enough so for, for the CLT, but then, but then a CLT is just an approximation. It's really hard to tell. Um, and also, CLT doesn't work for, um, for probability distributions that are far away, so for large deviations. So um, the first one doesn't seem too bad because it seems like we can trust it most of the time. But the second one seems to be a big deal because most of our problems seem to have to deal with large deviations. Well, what do we do? Well, this is where the turnoff bounds come in. So, oh, turnoff bounds. The basic idea is that the turnoff bound is good for large deviations. So we saw that the um, CLT is good when your values uh, are close to the mean, but when your values are far from the mean, the CLT becomes a less accurate approximation, which is why we uh, bother with the turnoff bound. The formula is complicated, but the basic idea um, for our proof, uh, if you follow the notes, is that you use the Markov inequality on um, the transformation of the random variable of the random variable x. And so you don't really need to know what a transformation is except it's um, e to the s and the random variable, uh, where s is a certain constant. And so um, the resulting formula looks something like Remember, this is the summation of the random variables. Um, it is greater than a certain distance. Uh, the probability that uh, this sequence is away from this certain distance is less than e to the negative n a phi of x1a. And what this is basically telling us is that as n grows bigger, this probability that um, the sequence is larger than a certain a falls exponentially, so exponential decrease is what makes the turnoff bound really good. So for for large deviations, so um, and in the binomial, uh, let me just write out this function phi of x one. Um, it's actually the max of all the positive s's, such that um, s of s a minus the natural log of the transformation. If I can squeeze it in, I can't. So e to the s x1. So this is what the function here is abstracting. And um, in the binomial case, We, actually, we could actually solve for this, right? It's also in the lecture notes. You'll end up 
finding out that p of x1 is uh, the kolbach bleiber divergence. Uh, sorry if I butchered his name. But this is just a special case of the general Chernoff bound here, um, which you can derive from the lecture notes. But the important takeaway is that we, we need to know how to compare the Chernoff bound with the CLT. Some differences that we've already um, explored was that this is an approximation while Chernoff is a bound. A CLT is good for small deviations. While Chernoff is good for large. And we'll go from there. So an important exercise is to be able to read the plots that um, compares the Chernoff bound with the CLT. So for instance, here we have two different plots from the lecture notes. N is the number of samples. Remember, we, we want to make n bigger and bigger to see what happens when the ra random variables are um, added asymptotically. While on the y-axis, you have the natural log of the probability that you'll reach uh, a certain number of deviation or a certain um, distance. So you can see that here we have a small deviation. And here we have a larger deviation. And notice we also have a parameter p, which makes the um, graphs a little bit different. But let's see what's going on. So remember how Chernoff is an upper bound? Well, we can see here that the Chernoff uh, probability will always be higher um, than the actual probability, which is exactly what we want. But notice how the central limit theorem becomes less and less accurate for the large deviation as n increases. So CLT becomes less accurate for large deviations as n goes to infinity. Meanwhile, the Chernoff bound is uh, significant because it matches the slope. of the actual probability. And you can see this in this example here. The slopes are pretty much the same. Also up here where the slopes are pretty much the same and here. But the reason why we only care about the large deviation case is because, as you can see, the central limit theorem does much better for smaller deviations. because Chernoff uh, provides this cushion, right, as, as it's an upper bound. But this cushion really helps for the large deviation. And so um, what's important to note from the lecture notes, from the notes, CLT is based on a second order Taylor expansion. So. That's why it's an approximation, because it doesn't go all the way with the expansion. And so it's really close in the beginning, but then it starts to fade away, while Chernoff remains um, persistent in following the slope of the actual probability. Therefore, this is why Chernoff is more effective for larger deviations. Although this CLT starts really closely at the beginning, it, uh, it becomes inaccurate either above or below. You can't tell, which is why it's inaccurate in either case. So this is how you read uh, the plots for Chernoff or central limit theorem. You might have to identify which one's which on an exam. And also um, consider other bounds too, like Markov or Chebyshev inequality. But you should know that since Chernoff is actually a pretty good bound, you'd expect um, Chebyshev and Markov to be somewhere up here for this deviation, very far off. So Markov and Chebyshev are quite um, loose compared to the Chernoff band. And um, so again, important takeaway, Chernoff is not effective um, 
for small deviations, it's like using water moves against a grass type Pokemon, uh, while CLT has the same problem when you're dealing with large deviations. And last but not least, a reminder that the turnoff bound is an upper bound, and so you'll definitely see that it's above this actual probability, whereas the CLT can creep below this actual probability. So this concludes the review video. If you have any questions, please post on Piazza, and I'll see you there. Good luck with finals.